Hi Year 7, really nice to be speaking to you. I'm making this video in order to explain to you how to use your revision guidance sheets. Hopefully you've got them in front of you right now or soon will have. But before I talk to you a little bit more about how to revise and demonstrate that for you, I want to talk to you a little bit about timetabling because timetabling your revision is really important. You'll remember from an assembly I did a little while ago that I said to you, you mustn't cram in the days or even the nights before an assessment. So it's really important that you space out your revision. So your first formal assessment will be science in the week beginning the 17th of May. And your final formal assessment will be in expressive arts. And that will be in the week beginning the 28th of June. So you need to start thinking about prioritising and obviously you wouldn't be starting right now by revising expressive arts. Your first priority, but not your only priority, is going to be to start planning your revision and then doing your revision for science. And so that's the subject we're going to concentrate on more than any other this, um, in this video. One final thing about timetabling, which I think is really important, is what I call the power of three, which is try to return to the things that you have been learning at least three times to help the memory stick. Because remember, if you don't uh, remember it, you've not actually learned it. And revisiting something three times after your first exposure to it will probably give you a better chance of remembering it in time for your uh, formal assessment. So please do bear that in mind when you are planning your revision. Try to plan things so that you're going to look at a topic hopefully three times before you then actually do that assessment. Okay, let's now talk about this sheet here. This sheet here is your revision guidance sheet. And I'm hoping that you either have these in front of you now or that you soon will do. So you'll know exactly how to use it when you get it, even if you've not got it in front of you now. So one of the first things that it says here to do is to do the setup. So on the top of the page, write the date, the subject and the topic and underline all three. So we're trying to keep it consistent with how you work in class. So I'm just going to do that now. So I'm going to focus on science because that's your first assessment too. And the topic is acids and alkalis. So that will be one of the topics that you're going to be assessed on in your formal assessment. So the first thing I need to do on the top of the page is to write down the date. So today's date is the um, 4th of May. Uh, the next thing is the subject. So I'm going to write that here in the center, science. And then the topic. The topic is acids and alkalis. This will help me when I return to my notes. Remember, I've said you should return to these things three times. This will help me find my notes and work from them. So I'm now underlining them. The next thing I do is I count five lines up from the bottom of the paper and I draw a line across it. So here I am, one, two, three, four, five. And there's my line being drawn across the bottom of the piece of paper. I'll explain a little bit more about why I've done that later on in this video. So the next thing that I do is I now begin the process of what's called looking, covering, writing and correcting. It's one way that you can test yourself, quiz yourself on what you've learned. It's really old fashioned. Uh, but it is a really effective and efficient way of revising, which is why we're recommending this as being one way of revising to you. So the first thing that we do, and again, I'm just working from this sheet here, is we're looking. So I'm reading. I could even read aloud. That might help the information sink in. A small relevant section of information. I need to do that thoroughly. And I need to break up larger sections into smaller sections. Now, that could be from an exercise book or it could be from a knowledge organiser. Well, I have here a knowledge organiser on acids and alkalis. This is the topic that one of several topics that I know is coming up on my science 
formal assessment. So here's my knowledge organizer, so I've got the right resource. But if I suddenly started to want to revise all of this all in one go, my brain would just not be able to cope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down into smaller chunks and I'm just going to concentrate on learning this section to begin with. So I'm now going to read it. For the purposes of the video, I'm going to read it out loud. Signs that a chemical reaction is taking place. There are four things. Flames or sparks, smell, sweet or foul, change in temperature, hot or cold, a loud popping noise or a bang or some gentle fizzing like a gas being given off. So that's the thing I'm going to concentrate on right now. So I've looked it and I've read it out loud. So I'm now going to cover the information. I'm going to cover it up so that I can't see it. Okay, so just with another piece of paper, I'm just going to cover it up so that I can't see it. Then what do I do? Well, I now need to write that information or recreate it because it's not always writing actually, Year 7. You might be recreating a diagram um, or drawing a picture from some other subjects. So when I say write, really it is you reproducing that information, however you have been learning it. So from that information that we've read, it could be a key word, it could be um, a question that we need to answer. I could also again, verbalize what um, I'm writing down. Again, maybe me speaking it out loud will help the memory stick. So let's see if I can um, remember those four things. So um, the first thing I seem to remember is flames or sparks. Now what else? Smell. Smell was the second one, I think. Then we had changes in temperature. And I think there was some extra information there, which was hot and cold. And then finally, there was something to do with noises. So loud pops, bangs, fizzing. OK, I'm fairly happy with that, that I've remembered those four things. So let's now do a comparison, because the fourth part of the process, after look, cover, write, is to correct. And this is a challenge for me, that if I don't remember the information correctly, I need to correct it, ideally with a green pen. So try and keep it consistent with what you are doing in class. And then begin the process again. Learn from your mistakes and then reproduce it. So I'm going to look at the answers now. And I'm going to check what I uh, managed to do. So let's imagine this is now a green pen. So I'm going to tick, ah, OK, flames or sparks. I got that right. Smell, I also got right, the second bullet point, but I'd forgotten the extra information. So in green pen, I would highlight the fact that I need to remember that that smell could be a sweet smell or a foul smell. And do you know what? I'm going to put a box around that information as well to really draw my attention to that when it comes to revising later. Changes in temperature, hot and cold, I got that one correct. And a loud pop, a bang or fizzing. Now, I didn't get that 100% correctly, uh, correct, I should say. I missed out a couple of words, so maybe gentle fizzing is something that I could, again, highlight in a green pen. And also maybe some extra information about a gas being given off. So, for my first attempt, Year 7s, I hope you agree with me, I don't think I did too badly, but I've still not remembered all of the information fully or correctly. So, I've not yet learned it, because if I've not remembered it, I've not learned it. So what I would do now is I would repeat that process. I'm not going to demonstrate that again for you, repeating the process, but obviously it would involve me covering it up again and covering up what I'd already written and then having another go. Once I've had a chance to study what is in front of me and to learn from my mistakes. Let's imagine that I've repeated that process, but let's also imagine that for some reason, what's not sticking in my head is that small bit of information that I forgot before, which is that the smell could be sweet or foul. That's why I have, and this links to the third section of your revision guidance sheets, that's why I've got this um, space at the bottom, these five lines. So if for whatever reason, that's just not sinking in about the sweet or foul smell, 
I'm going to make a note at the bottom so that when I review this information in maybe a day's time or a week's time, this will highlight to me what I really need to focus on because I'm still not remembering it. So I'm going to make a note here about a sweet and foul smell. In this space, having read the knowledge organiser or whatever it is, I might also uh, write down questions for my teachers if there's something I just don't understand. I might have learned it, but if I still don't understand it, then that's a problem. So again, to help me take active control of my learning, what I might do is I might then write some questions down for my teachers. So what does this really mean? What happens when this happens? Can you explain to me why? Use this as an opportunity when you're doing your reflection at the end of a revision session Use it as an opportunity to bring together the things that you still aren't sure on because that will help you focus your revision later. I should point out to you as well, I've already mentioned that you should keep your revision uh, focused on small parts. So you're not going to learn all of this in one go, but you are going to break it down into its smaller parts. You must also make sure that you don't go over too much in terms of time. 20 minutes is enough time on a section of something like this without taking a break. You must take regular breaks. Remember as well that you don't have um, homework anymore except to revise. So you should be using your time, which you would otherwise be doing on homework. You should be doing that wisely, concentrating on learning this. But even so, unlike a piece of homework, which you might keep doing until you absolutely finish it, with revision, you need to keep making sure that you do things little and often and take lots of breaks. Finally, I'm just going to demonstrate to you uh, about how to make and use some flashcards. I think most topics can probably be reduced down into um, 16 questions and answers. I would say any more than that and you're going to struggle to remember the answers to those questions. So all I've done here is I've got a piece of card and it doesn't need to be anything more flashy than this. I know um, I've given you some information on Quizlet which you can do online. But to be honest, this is as good as anything else as well. So here I've got uh, space for four um, questions and on the back, um, sorry, not four questions. You've got space for 16 questions and 16 answers on the back. You've got four uh, lines going down vertically and uh, four um, lines going across um, horizontally. So let's take a look at how we're going to use this. So this is now the fourth thing on the revision guidance sheet, making and using some flashcards. So again, I'm going to take a look at my knowledge organizer and I can see that there's another section that I need to learn, which are the key words and their definitions. Well, that's a great way of using flashcards. So on one side, I'm going to write down the key word. The key word is acid. And on the back, I'm going to write down the definition. The definition is a solution with a pH value of less than seven. And I'm making sure that I copy that information down exactly as it appears on the knowledge organizer. I can then do that for all of the other definitions. I could put alkali in there, chemical reaction in there, concentrated in there. But what do I now do? I take my scissors, being careful how I cut, and I've made myself a really simple flashcard. And what I can do as part of my revision now is I can just step away from the knowledge organizer for a little bit, go through all of my cards and go, okay, acid. That's when the pH value is less than seven. Is that right? Let me have a look. Oh, not quite, it's a solution, I need to be more specific. But I did get the pH value right, a pH value of less than seven. Okay, I'll now try that again. What is an acid? A solution with a pH value of less than seven. Am I right? Yes, I am, absolutely. And you can do this interactively with parents, whoever's at home, brothers and sisters. You can do it with your friends, which makes it more fun. Uh, but ultimately, what have you got? You've got a question or a prompt on one side with an answer on the other through which you work until you've learned all of the answers fully. So that's how you can use flashcards. I did mention Quizlet and I will try and show you how to use that um, online as well in a future assembly 
or I'll send some more instructions out to your tutors for that to be played to you in tutor time in due course. But I wanted to give you in this video um, a quick summary of how to use this sheet effectively and efficiently so that you can be the best that you can be, which is one of our values, aspiration, in these formal assessments which are coming up in the next few weeks and will be finishing at the end of June. Um, the only final thing I'm going to say as I sign off is remember all of your subjects are slightly different and so there might be different things that your teachers ask you to do as part of your revision as well. So for example, um, I know that the science faculty are also producing some questions which will go with, for example, the knowledge organiser itself as another way of you self-testing to test what you know and understand about, for example, acids and alkalis. In other subjects, such as mathematics, you might be directed to do some more practice using an online platform. So please do make sure that you speak to your teachers um, about how to use this. But remember, this is not the only way. It's the main way, but not the only way that you will be revising for these formal assessments. And keep that conversation, keep that dialogue going with your teachers to make sure that you know exactly what to do and how to do it. Well, Year 7, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you this morning and to demonstrate how to revise effectively. I wish you all the very best in those formal assessments. I know that if you show commitment, another one of our school values, if you do what it takes for as long as it takes, then you will absolutely enjoy success. You'll be ready then to take on the world. So thank you again. Take care and stay safe and happy revising. Bye for now. Bye.